In this lesson, we are going to learn about graphs, distance time graphs and velocity time graphs. First, we will start with the distance time graphs. Distant time graphs help us understand the change in position of an object with respect to time. You can see from this graph that we plot the time on the x-axis and the distance on the y-axis. Let's understand this with the help of an example. This is a race event. This race event is a 100 meter race event. You can see that all the four runners that are at the start line right now. That's the origin, that's, where, that's from where we're going to measure the distance. They all are supposed to, of course, reach the 100 meter mass as soon as possible. Now, once the race starts, you see that the first runner who's running the fastest, he crosses the finish line in only 12 seconds. The second runner takes 14 seconds. The third runner takes 16 seconds. The fourth runner anyway fell down in the middle of the path at 50 meters in a matter of 5 seconds. Let's look at this on a distance time graph now. What we will do is that we'll plot an individual graph for each of the four runners. And to plot that, we need the initial and the starting point of the lines. The origin, the start point of all the four runners is same. It's at t equal to 0 and s equal to 0, which is the origin point. Now we need to identify the four points with which we need to connect the origin for the four runners. For the first three runners who finished the race, for them, the time was 12, 14 and 16 seconds and the distance was 100 meters. So you can see that these are the three points. For the fourth runner, since he only covered 50 meters and 5 seconds, for him the end point would be this. Now let's draw these four lines from the origin and see how it looks. So what we are going to do now is that for all four runners, we are going to draw their individual graphs. To draw their individual lines, we need the starting point and the end point. We saw that all the four runners started from the start line. That was the origin, s equal to 0 and t equal to 0. So all the four runners are obviously going to start from the bottom of the chart. Now, let's draw them one by one. The first runner, he finished the race 100 meters in 12 seconds. So this is the graph of the first runner. The second runner finished it in 14 seconds. This is the graph of the second runner. The third runner took 16 seconds and this is the graph of the third runner. We all saw what happened with the fourth runner. The fourth runner only ran halfway and fell down. So the fourth runner ran only for five seconds and this is the graph for the fourth runner. Now an important point. We are assuming that at the end of the race all the four runners just stopped running. What that means is that their position does not change. The position of their distance neither increases nor decreases along the time. So therefore what you see after those points are just straight lines. Now let's look at some interesting observations. We are just going to focus on runner number one. So let's forget all the other lines right now. So if you see the graph of runner number one, what we're going to do is we're going to identify a small section. Let's identify these two points A and B. A is at three seconds and B is at nine seconds. We'll just look at this part of the journey. And we'll just draw a horizontal and a vertical line. And both these lines, you can see they meet at the point C. Now you can see clearly that the section AC is the duration of time for the section AB. And the section BC is the amount of distance traveled for the section AB. What we are trying to do is we are trying to find out the speed of this runner 1. The speed is what? It is distance upon time. So if you divide the distance with the time, you will see that the speed comes to 50 by 6 or 25 by 3 meters per second. Now the section AB that we just chose, it could have been a smaller section or a bigger section. We would still get the same result for the speed because we assume that all the runners are running at a uniform speed. Let's choose a different section now. Let's choose the entire journey. Now point A will therefore go to the origin and point B will be at 100 meters. Now if you calculate the speed, it will be this upon this, which is 100 meters divided by 12 seconds. So it comes out again as 25 by 3 meter per second. Now let's look at the previous graph again in which we had all the four runners. I want to make a very interesting observation. If you look at all these lines, you would see that the angle, the slope, it is becoming steeper, the angle is rising. What that means is that runner number one is running faster than runner number two is running faster than runner number three. But what about runner number four? Is it running faster or slower? Let's look at its speed value first. To calculate the speed of runner number four, it's very easy. You just have to divide this section by this section. This is the distance traveled, which is 50 meters. And this is the time taken, which is 5 seconds. 
So the speed of runner number four is actually higher. It's 10 meter per second. It's higher than even runner number one. Therefore, and you can see from this graph, its, its slope, its angle is also higher than runner number one. What that means is that if runner four had continued to run, it would have actually won the race. With this example, we learned about plotting the distance time graph for uniform motion when the speed of the object is not changing. Now let's look at what happens when the speed is changing, when it's non-uniform motion. Let's consider an example. There's a motorcycle which is covering unequal distances in equal amounts of time. Here are the details. You can see that the time values and there are the distance values. What we are going to do now is we're going to plot a distance time graph for the motion of this motorcycle. Again, on x-axis we have time, on y-axis we have the distance. And you can see now, we have plotted all these points and the line. You can see that it is not a straight line now. It is a curved line. So therefore, when a body is in a non-uniform motion, when it's traveling unequal distances in equal amounts of time, the distance time graph is not a straight line, it's a curved line. So that was all about distance time graphs. Now let's talk about velocity time graphs. What if we start with the same example? We just saw that in the distance time graph, when we drew it for the non-uniform motion, it turned out to be a curved line. Now we're going to draw the same numbers on a velocity time graph. For that, we of course need the velocity figures. So we're going to add a third column in that table. These are the velocity data points. Now we're going to draw a velocity time graph. Velocity is on the y-axis, time is on the x-axis. And you can see that the velocity time graph even though it was a non-uniform motion, turns out to be a straight line. What that means is that the change in velocity, the amount of change in velocity in equal intervals of time remains the same. Therefore, we can say that in a uniformly accelerated motion, the velocity time graph is a straight line. Now in this example, we saw that the value of velocity keeps on changing. If we define the velocity at a particular instant, that is called the instantaneous velocity. Just to give you a couple of examples, you can see that t equal to 2 seconds, the velocity is 1 meter per second. And at t equal to 10 seconds, the velocity is 5 meter per second. These two values are just examples of an instantaneous velocity, which is the velocity at a particular instant. Average velocity is something completely different. Average velocity is total displacement upon total time. For this particular example, you can see that the total displacement is 36 meters and the total time taken to travel is 12 seconds. So the average velocity comes out to be 3 meters per second. Now average velocity will be different for different time intervals for different durations of the journey. For example, if you pick the first 4 seconds of the journey, you can see that the total displacement was 4 meters and the time taken is of course 4 seconds. So the average velocity for the first 4 seconds of the travel was just one meter per second. Now let's find out the value of acceleration. We all study that the formula for acceleration is V minus U upon T. Final velocity minus initial velocity upon the time taken. We can select any duration in this journey. Let's pick up time equal to four seconds to time equal to 10 seconds of the journey. The velocity at four seconds was two meter per second. The velocity at 10 seconds is five meter per second. So if we put this in the formula, you can see that the value of acceleration comes out to be 3 upon 6, which is 0.5 meter per second square. Now we will talk about how the velocity time graph can be used to find out displacement value. This is a new graph. You can see that this is a velocity time graph and the straight line indicates that it's a uniformly accelerated motion. Now I'm just picking two points on this journey, point A and point E. What we are trying to understand is that the area that is covered between point A and E, the area, the entire area that is covered is indicative. The value of that area is the value of the displacement between those two points. You can see that this area is actually a combination of two different areas. The rectangle ABCD and the triangle ADE. So if you sum up these two areas, you get the value of the displacement. The area of the rectangle will just be the multiplication of the length and the breadth. And the area of the triangle will be 1 by 2 into the base into the height. Now the velocity time graphs need not always look like this, like a straight line going up. It could be a line coming down like this graph. It could be a straight line 
or it could be a line going up and down, up and down. In the first case, when the line is coming down, that is the case where the velocity is actually decreasing. It's a case of deacceleration, a retardation, but it's still a uniform retardation. The second case where the line is straight, that basically means that the velocity is constant, it is not changing, which means the acceleration is zero. In the third case, when the velocity is going up and down, up and down, what it means that there is an acceleration followed by a deacceleration, followed by acceleration again, followed by deacceleration again. But in all these scenarios, in all these four scenarios, you pick any two points and the area that is covered beneath that, those two particular points will give us the value of the displacement. So in this lesson, we learned about how to draw and read distance time graphs. We learned how to calculate speed from it. We also learned how to draw and read velocity time graphs and how to calculate acceleration from it.